Hey, what is up, everyone? And welcome back to another Animus tutorial. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody who's been supporting the channel so far. And if you like my content, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for future content and supporting the channel's growth. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Today's tutorial is going to be about mixing your paints. All right, so welcome back. So uh, first thing, thing I want to talk about is going to be mixing your paints. Now, I know I already went through a video on how to mix or thin your paints uh, to a certain degree. And you know, I explain how to make you know self-made labels and everything's well, of the sort uh, for you to be able to sort your paints and already have them pre-thinned uh, for whatever you're going to paint. Now, with that being said, the question arose for most of you was, well, you know, Animus, what if I want to mix uh, my paints? What if I want to thin them, but I also want to make sure that I uh, mix my paints so that way I can do custom work instead of just using standard colors. Please keep in mind that this is just how I do it. Everybody's gonna have different techniques on how to mix their paints. Uh, this is just how I do it here. Uh, and it's not necessarily applicable for everyone. You know, some people will, you know, with time you will develop your own skills in regards to mixing paint. So let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna go through is going to be the tools that you're gonna need. And first and foremost, you're gonna need gloves. Uh, for those of you that like to mix paints, you guys know that I always recommend using gloves with this, mainly because you know, you want to make sure that you don't get any paint on your hands. And if you do get paint on your hands, then it'll be easier to clean if you have gloves, because all you got to do is take the glove off, throw it out, right? Uh, when if you have it in your hands, you're going to need a rag, you're going to need thinner or, alcohol, or rubbing alcohol. So you can go ahead and get that off your hands. Now, um, with that being said, you're also going to need some of these. Like now, um, most of the times, uh, these are going to be used for people that are painting maybe minis or anything like that. Or maybe if you have like a plastic color palette where you can pour a little bit of paint in different slots and then mix and match however you want, you can do that as well. Um, I like these. These are Mr. Hobby ones. I'm going to use these to test mix the paints um, and the, some of the paints and then we'll go from there. Uh, other things that you can use, for example, when I'm doing big projects like my, um, my, like my Builders World Cup uh, project, I used these. Now... These are actually our, our dipping sauce cups and I get it from, I get them, you know, in bulk from Amazon. They're, they're relatively cheap. Uh, what you do is you pour the, uh, you pour, you start mixing the paints in here. Go ahead and close the lid out and they're perfect for storage. You go ahead and get a nice seal, label it, set it to the side and then you're good to go. Same thing, next color, seal it, set it to the side, good to go. Um, so we will be t we will be testing some of the colors today. Uh, so in that in that regard, I will be at least mixing three colors into three of these cups, and then we'll go ahead and test them to see how they spray, and see if I can get the result that I want out of them. Um, so we're going to be testing how to mix um, metallic paints. Uh, some mix metallic paints will mix better than others. Uh, we'll I'll teach you guys how to do shading for paints. Uh, maybe get you know for example get this blue and then maybe get a lighter one or even a darker one uh, and then we'll go from there I had one of you ask me can I make a uh, paint like this metallic I'm gonna show you how today um, mainly it involves using some metallic paint um, and it'll the tone will darken a little bit but I normally like to use uh, burnt iron to get that to get that metallic uh, added to this one and all it'll give it is that metallic finish. Uh, it won't really make it into a metallic paint, right? So uh, we'll, this will be like more into that lane of metallic paint. Um, but we will go ahead and try it out. The next thing that you're going to need is going to be your little missing mixing sticks. I got a bunch of them here. I use it to mix the paint around. Uh, some people like to use their brush um, if they're brush painting. That's fine as well. But since I don't brush paint. You know, I mainly I'm just I just have these so I can mix the paint around and then go from there. I uh, try not to mix and match so that way everything's good. I've got some rags here, rubbing alcohol, some thinner just in case, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, somebody asked me, well, what do you do? What do you use for color palettes? So um, for color palettes, I normally use anything online. Like there are palette applications online that you can use, uh, and that way. You can go, you know, Apple might have one and then Android might have another one and they're all color. They, and you can Google color palettes as well where you can mix and match colors to get what you want. And it'll even sometimes tell you what ratios you need depending on the scale. Um, I usually 
eyeball my mixtures depending you know I have an idea of what kind of color I want based out of the base color uh, and that's where I get you know my colors from um, so for example I'm gonna go ahead and start with this green so this is the G paint Saku green um, I do also have the one from Hobby Mio, but this one's already open, so I decided just to use this one, right? So in the event that you did want to have, um, you know, le different levels or of shade for this green, all you would have to do is to make sure to mix it with the correct adequate colors. Now, for example, uh, if you want a darker shade, then you want to make sure you add a little black in there. So the way that you're going, that I normally recommend to do it is that, for example, I'm gonna use a few drops as an example. Right now, I just threw, I just threw three three drops in there. Let me pour a little bit more just for visual. Doesn't matter if I waste a little bit of paint here. Um, if you want to make it darker, all you have to do is pour like maybe one drop, or two, or maybe three, four, or five. It doesn't matter, really matter. Uh, and then you just mix around, try to get a darker shade. Since it's green, it's probably going to take a little bit more black. As you can see, it already started to take effect. So let's go ahead and pour a little bit more black in there. All right. That darker green in there. Perfect. All right. So you get this, uh, this like this black green. You start getting this black green tone in there, right? So that's one, right? So uh, let me go ahead and set this to the side. Set it on my rack there, since we're just mixing it. And if you can see the color, the color darkened quite a bit just by adding a little bit of black, right? So this is what you want. You know, I always pe tell people to choose a base color. Uh, and then work your shadings from there if you're going to have um, if you're going if you want different shades from it So now I'm gonna go ahead and pour the green on another cup right and Then we want a lighter tone of this green All right so Go ahead and And I can, I can hear the purists in the comments already, you know, commenting crazy stuff like he's not measuring the paint that he's pouring in there. Well, it's because I've been mixing paint for a while. So I'm, I already know how much paint I need to get the kind of tone that I need. Uh, for those of you that are starting in, in this paint journey, uh, you'll learn with time. Uh, you can use palettes to teach you. Uh, but you will learn with time and, and you will, you'll start getting used to it and then it's not about just pouring paint in there. You, you'll you go ahead and start saying like, okay, well, you know, this is this is too light, this is too dark, this is not what I want, you know, and, and, it'll, and you'll keep growing from there and learning. Uh, so as you can see, got a little lighter shade of green there, which is what I wanted, right? Um, so this is just an example of what the different shades would look like depending on what you use so to get dark i always use black or white on paint to make them lighter um that is the that is the only that is the only way that at least i know uh to make paints lighter now i know that i am demonstrating this with g paint this will apply with all different paints that you want to use okay so that that is that is the thing you know don't just think that i'm only doing this with g paint and that's all you got to get because that's not it Th these paints are not as great as a lot of people think but i digress um i'm only using them here as an example because they're already available uh so for that uh we're gonna go ahead and set these to the side and then we'll try with another color and i will let you and, and we'll go ahead and try to mix some match some colors to see if we can get some new tones and then we'll go from there some of you asked me about how do I get different tones of paint, so that's why I wanted to make sure that I explained it using that simple green, white, and black, uh, so that way uh, you guys can understand. Now for creating colors themselves. So uh, someone asked me about maybe making like a, a purple or something of the sort. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to mix a purple that I normally use, um, and I'm gonna do it using 
this guy blue. And I don't see my red here, so I guess I'll try to use G paint. So hopefully this doesn't backfire because this these paints these paints don't really like getting mixed with other paints. Uh, but we're gonna see we're gonna see today. So first we're gonna go ahead and pour the sky blue here, right? Get that nice tone there. I love this color. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite colors from the uh, Mr. Color line. Is the sky blue uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw some red in here might have been a little bit too much but we'll, we'll see in a second all right so it hasn't really it just killed my sky blue there uh, let's try to get used a little bit more see if it'll finish the job Almost there. All right. All right. Purple. Great. Great. I love it. All right. So now that I have the pur now that I have uh, purple, <laughs> so, there's a little bit of paint magic there. So if it, it just depends on what colors you're mixing, right? Uh, so for example, I already have purple here. a nice shade of purple too um, and now we're gonna go ahead and lighten it up uh, so what I like to do is that I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of white it's weird that um, that it's mixing the G paint is mixing as well as it is with that mr. color sky blue uh, last time I tried to do it it didn't work out as I would like I wanted to um, it still doesn't like it you can tell by the paint composure now that that's done um we're done we're done mixing the paint so this would be this would be purple right so you would mix to mix purple well, i can tell you right now you gotta use like blue or any type of blue and then some red uh maybe if you want to make it lighter you can use a you can use a a um white and if you're trying to make it like a little bit more brilliant you probably use yellow a little bit of yellow in there uh to line it up a little bit it's going to depend on what kind of color and finish you're trying to go for. Uh, now, now that we have this purple and we've mixed it up, um, normally when you're mixing paints, when you're mixing your paint, you want to make sure that that not only you get the color you want, but you get the consistency that you want. That's why I normally pre-mix my paints. Um, that's why I showed you guys how to thin your paints. So that way you guys already have them pre-thin and all you got to do is mix it to get the color that you want. Uh, some people mix their colors inside their airbrush. I don't do that Some might find that works for them and that's fine. I myself. I don't do that uh, But I do use the mixing little mixing cups uh, like I told you before, you know, here's The two shades of green we will be using them. Oh, we will be using them to paint uh, So that way you guys can see how it ends up We'll use some spoons like we always do and then go from there now now that I have this purple here, someone asked me, what if I wanted to make like a normal color metallic? What if I mix a color of paint that I like and I decide that, hey, you know, I want to make it into a metallic color. Well, that's very easy. So normally I would recommend going with like a silver or a burnt iron or a, you know, dark iron or something like that. Something that has gray and a, metal a metallic that might have gray in it. Uh, so what you want to do is that you're just going to gently pour a few drops into your paint and hopefully it doesn't backfire on me because I've had it happen before, right? Pour, pour a little bit of that metallic paint in there. Well, we're about to find out. Mix it very well. You might not be able to see it on camera, but you'll see it once we spray. You'll see all that metal metallic pigment in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spray this and see where it goes. So I'll go ahead and put this in a cup. So that way we can go ahead and use it later. Let me go ahead and seal this, get a good nice seal in there, throw it to the side so we can spray it later. Now, uh, the last thing I wanna talk about is going to be 
mixing metallic paints. Now, uh, with this, it's more of a risk versus reward type of thing uh, because you want to make sure that uh, that you're able to do, you know, your metallic color that you're trying to go for, uh, and that's fine. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people have, you know, issues with like mixing paints because they they probably don't get the type of tones that they want. Uh, and I am just giving you guys an example. Uh, so this is the purple that I was actually going for. Uh, if I needed something different, I would probably try to adjust it as much as I could. Um, but I was going for that tone, that specific tone where it's not too dark, not too light. Um, and we could add the metallic in there so it could give it that little metallic shine when I throw the gloss on top and then go from there. Now, with that being said, um, I want you guys to understand that this is just how I am mix my paints to get different colors. Now, everybody's going to have different techniques. I want you guys to understand that uh, the way that I mix my paints is probably not the same as everybody else might mix their paints. Um, I just mix it how it's more convenient for me because it's the easiest way to save time. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm wrong, but some people might think that I'm not right either, uh, which is fine because everybody has different ways of doing things. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to have already your paints pre thinned uh, instead of just painting every, you know, trying to mix your paint and then thin it. I, I feel like that's too much work for the reward, so uh, so you can go from there. Now, I had one of you ask me about darkening and lightening uh, your metallic colors. And for that, I'm going to use a big ex example, which is going to be the gold. Now, uh, some of you asked me about my God Gundam that I painted and how I, how I got it to get, you know, different tones of gold. The way that I did it was adding different shades of gold for example i um i used metallic black to darken it and then i used silver to lighten it um i don't know if i have the silver here but i do have the dark iron which i will use to explain to go ahead and darken it so you guys can take a look so let's go ahead and mix it up right so um go ahead and pour it a little bit in here i love this color this color is probably one of my favorite shades of gold uh, paint that they sell the only problem is that to get it is a little bit uh, hard because everybody wants the gold paints which is fine uh, everybody wants to have gold paints so, so they all they're always sold out everywhere um, so as you can see it's a beautiful shade of gold so what I did to darken it last time like I grabbed a little bit of dark iron here poured it in there you go, a little bit more Right. And you can tell the difference in shades just by looking at it. You can tell the difference in shades just by looking at it. So, and that's how I make most colors. Like if you're trying to, and this is more like going to a like titanium look. Um, so, so the, and that's usually how I make it. it. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, everybody's gonna make it the same way. Um, so it just depends on what you're looking for in regards to you know your paint and what your results are going to be. Um, I recommend to use a color palette if you have not mixed colors before. And usually, some people will try want to you know when they plan out their projects, they want to make sure that they have specific colors, um, and that's fine. I just have a lot of pre-thin colors that I know that I could probably get the shades that I want, and then I just make bulk of it so that way I can use it for. Uh, my current project or whatever project I'm working on. Now, we're gonna go to uh, try to darken a different metallic paint, right? So, for example, I have this uh, metallic blue. So this is probably one of my favorite metallic blues out of all because it's the uh, Mr. Color metallic paint. Now, I love this shade of metallic blue. Uh, I am going to try to use the Hobby Mio one because I like the shade on that one as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and pour some of that blue in there. All right. Look at that, it's a beautiful, beautiful metallic, beautiful metallic blue. I love it. Um, so how do you darken it? How do you lighten it? So I normally would use, uh, some people say, well, you can just put white in it. Well, 
you could, but then the pigments are going to lose its uh, glamour, I want to say. Uh, so what I like to do is that I like to use a uh, silver on it. Right, so this is my Mr. Color Metallic, um, GX Metallic, you know, uh, silver. Um, go ahead and give it a good shake. And then what you want to do with these, you definitely have to make sure that you don't over pour. So I want to make sure I get like a few drops in there. One, and two, and that's enough for now. Just to see where the color is at. Go ahead and mix it up. See how it lines the color right away. So what you want to do then? Um, so for example, let me let, let me put them side by side, right? So when you put them side by side, you can barely tell the difference right there, but you can see the light silver. You can see the light silver how it lit up the color itself. You can see the tone, and when you spray it, it's going to look amazing. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pour a little bit more silver on it. Four, five, six, seven, let's do eight drops. This is why I love these, love these pour bottles uh, because you could just, you know, put little small drips in it. Perfect. Get that light metallic blue. Here you have it. Here you go. Like you can see the those metallic pigments. They just look, it just looks gorgeous. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, pour this in a cup because we will be using it. So, uh, and that is how you, and, and that's how you do it. You know, whenever you are mixing your paint and you want to get a lighter color out of a metallic color, you should only use like dark metallic colors to mix it. So you don't lose that pigment that you want from a metallic color. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you could just put a few drops of black paint or white paint or whatever in it. Well, you know what? You can. I'm not going to say you can't because you can definitely do that. Do I recommend it? No, probably not. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I just, I just don't see it. I, you know, if you, if you use metallic paints, if you use metallic paints long enough, you'll understand that, you know, if you put, try to put whatever other color inside a metallic paint, it's just going to dull whatever the pigment is. Um, and then go from there. Uh, so this is going to look beautiful when I spray it. So I can't wait to spray that one. Uh, so let's go ahead. And now that we've mixed a few paints, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into the paint area so we can go ahead and spray these paints on some spoons, uh, let it dry, get some gloss coats in, and then come back to the table and give a full review and background of what we did uh, and then go from there. So welcome back. So uh, just like I was mentioning before, I did use some of the paints, you know, and, and graded them by colors so we can go ahead and um, test the colors out. And then that way, you know what we mixed and what we didn't mix. Right. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is going to be the white with the silver. So uh, when you try to make a white or white metallic, it'll always try to change the tone um, of the color itself. Now, you can barely you're barely going to be able to tell uh, what the silver specs look like with the camera um but the specs are there um but you can't really see it unless it gets hit by a certain light on a certain angle uh now here's the difference between spraying it what i wanted to mention before is that your uh your primer or whatever base color you use is going to be you know determine what kind of shade you're going to have in some of the colors like for example uh this was the same white but then one of them was sprayed in 
white primer and the other one was sprayed in black primer so uh, you'll get different shades there when it comes to that and uh, but this these sprayed very well so as you can see the shade we tried both shades one shaded with white as you can see there and then the other one we shaded it with a little bit darker with, uh, with black so we can go ahead and get that dark green in there now I did notice that we had I had some dust uh, probably from one of my air vents that fell on the uh, spoon itself so probably watch out for that for next time so that doesn't happen one thing that I did want to mention is that I've mentioned before that G paint really doesn't like being sprayed and you can tell um, with this spoon right here because this is supposed to be the sil the actual silver one uh, the, the one that is just a purple with the metallic um, you can see it on this end a little bit that it just didn't like it didn't like the clear being sprayed on it it had a reaction to it which is fine you know um, but like I said I normally don't use G paint to paint um, I use things like Mr. Color AOK Silver Oaks which goes down to this one right here which is the one which is the one that I made the purple with the metallic right so right um, so um, so right here is going to be that that same metallic blue that's right, beautiful metallic blue however the base the base colors are a black primer and a blue base color to get that shade there then as you turn it around and mind you this is the same one we mixed up uh, that is with a white primer so it looks beautiful either way but as you can see this is the same color the same color with different base colors it'll change the tone right uh, and I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because some people don't are not aware uh, and this is just that same blue with just a black base I kind of like the depth that the black base gives this color um, yeah I think it's, it's sprayed beautifully too so All right so now that I showed you how I normally would mix my paints um, with you know just doing everything by eye and getting the colors that I wanted just so I can get those shades uh, that's usually how you practice to make to measure to you know mix your paints uh, so that way you know you start playing with shades and you start creating new colors for yourself and go from there once you get those basics down then it comes to the hard part right so uh, the right the you know some people will say the right way to do it it's there's no really right way like you could just do it whatever feels better for you uh, but I will, what I would like to do sometimes if I'm doing like a really large project or a lot of kits that um, will have the same color pattern, like maybe I'll grab a grunt kit and like paint armies or anything like that. Then what I will do is that I'll grab the kit, the, this little thing right here. Let me go ahead and close it so it doesn't just wobble around. I'll place it there. Reset it so it's already balanced. Take it off. When you take it off, you see it has the negative two, but that's just accounting for the weight. For that right um, now I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of paint a little bit hard to get it you know stationary so we're just gonna let it sit there um, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go ahead and make some good old green I'm gonna take some yellow well, I guess I'll use I'll use this yellow All right, so that's two milliliters right there. So we're gonna go ahead and empty it and be done with it like that. Go ahead and grab this and close it. Uh, now I want to make sure that I tell that I tell you that you know so, uh, most people most people don't understand that uh, although some of the G paint paints don't like working with other colors, not all of them are the same. You know, some of them work better than others uh, when it comes to that. Um, I'd say that the only solid, the, the solid colors usually have, it don't have any issues unless you're spraying them overly. So we're going to go ahead and try to add, we're going to go with green. So usually for green, you have to go like 50, 50. Three, four, perfect. All right. Go 
ahead and mix it up. All right, and there you have it, green, right? Now, from here, you're already sitting at four milliliters, right? Uh, from here, it'll be whether or not you wanna make it a little bit brighter or you wanna make it a little bit darker, right? So we're gonna go ahead and bring back the yellow so we can go ahead and try to make it a little bit lighter. Give it one more milliliter. Uh, as you can see here, you can see that we've already finished the green. Now what I'm going to do is that I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of white. So how much we have? We have three milliliters of yellow and then two milliliters of blue. We're gonna add one milliliter of white. There you go, good. And that's it. Now you got a lighter green. So what I would do in this instance, since we did it this way, um, what I wanna do is that we'll go ahead and you would get a label, whether it be a masking tape or anything like that, and then write it down here. You know, just write whatever green this you wanna call this and it'll and then write you know maybe a little bit on top where it says you know two milliliters of this three milliliters of that one milliliter of this and that way once you have it um then you're all set and that way if you have to do more then you'll know how much you'll need to make this specific color this is just in case you are wanting to pre-thin your colors or i'm sorry pre-mix your colors uh for big projects and to remember it what I would also do is I keep a little bit of a little notepad where I keep all those all of those recipes uh, in case I want to do them again. Like, for example, I wrote down this recipe while I was doing this one earlier. And then I also wrote down this one so I can get these colors later on down the line. Um, and that is it. That is it for today's tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. There are other techniques that you can apply to mixing paints as well. So don't just limit yourself to whatever. Uh, whatever I am saying in this video, there are other techniques that you can practice. There are other things that you can also do. However, first you need to familiarize yourself well with mixing paints. And that's why I explained it earlier. Um, usually I'll just grab some of these and start mixing around just to see what colors you can get left and right, and then try them out, see how they look. Uh, and then after that, then you start doing a little bit of science, a little bit of math. You start measuring everything so you can write your recipes down and keep them. All right. So that is it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.